yo this video is a viewer request and shout out to them for putting me onto this video and actually never seen this video or heard this song before but they got some pretty cool effects we're gonna break some of them down here in today's video okay first off pick your shot but it's effect you're gonna preferably want your subject head not to move too much if you're behind the camera i recommend shooting a clean plate or using a green screen as possible the effect itself is very simple you're gonna take your clip hold alt on the keyboard move it up to make a copy you're gonna take the copy into the color page you're gonna go into your power window power window and select the pen tool you're gonna mask out his head once you're done your mask you can go into the tracking window and track back and forth this is exactly why you don't want the subject to move around too much you can get a better track you're gonna go over to your nodes, right click in the empty space and add an alpha point, then connect the dots. Back in the edit page, you can select that bottom clip and hit D to disable. That way you actually see your track. Let's see here how it holds. Back on the color page, you wanna go into the power windows and add a little softness to the edges and head back into the edit page. Now that our subject is tracked, you wanna hit and select the bottom clip, hit D to re-enable, and then simply just zoom in on the head. And you notice that it's off, you basically want to change your X, X and Y position. And just line it up. This effect is a lot easier, like I said, if you use a clean plate, which is basically just your scene without the subject in it, or use a green screen, you can select the keyframe marker here and you can actually move it around to track it. For the next effect, you're gonna to need to mask out your subject twice. Well, actually you need to mask it out once and then duplicate it. So this bottom layer, if you disable it, it's just the background, and then both of these layers are the masked out subject duplicated. Then you're gonna highlight the middle clip, right click, and then open Infusion. Now Infusion, with your media one select, you're gonna grab a transform node. In your first frame of your clip, go to the inspector tab and hit the keyframe on the center, and on the edge, you're gonna change it from canvas to wrap. Then you're gonna go to the last frame of your clip. You're gonna hold control, zoom out, and highlighting the numbers, you're gonna scroll this over as far as you want it to the go. The further you go out, the faster the effect goes. And if you right click, go to scale of fit, go back to the first frame, and you get this infinite loop effect. Go into the switch tab in the settings, ocean blur, you're gonna crank that up all the way and go back into your edit page. I'm gonna click and re enable my background clip and give it a second to render. Once your effect is rendered, With this next effect, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna take your middle clip, open an infusion, and you're gonna hit control and space, and you're gonna look up duplicate. The inspector tab, you're gonna crank it up to however many copies you want. You're gonna set it at seven for this effect. Time offset, well, it offsets the timing. So you can see there, she's actually moving and it basically kind of create like an echo effect. You're gonna inspect the tab and actually slide over your center. You can create duplicates. If you want to, you can keyframe it. So I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna reset keyframe and go about midway. Have them stretch out, go to the end and then right click and set the default. Of course, if you do this, it's an animation. So you already know if you've been here for a while, go into your spline editor, put a duplicate, zoom to fit. We'll click select all we we'll hit f to flatten that helps smooth out your animation but also go into your settings motion blur you can crank it up give it a second to render then once you render you can get to play out your animation but there's a lot more you can actually do with the duplicate effect and for the time being i'm gonna cut off motion blur go back into the controls you can actually change the size of the oh the too big now this looks a little weird because our legs are cut off but kind of get the idea you can actually change the pivot to drop them down and move from side to side. And back up top, you can go to jitter. You can actually hit reseed. And then actually what that would do is kind of more or less give you a random effect. You can actually kind of change it right here as well. The axis in the center. And you can also change the size. Hit reseed a couple of times. And then give you more of a randomized effect. Now for this last effect, the displace effect, same setup, gonna take the middle clip, right click, open infusion. We hit control and space and gonna look for the displace node. We're gonna grab a fast noise, connect it to the green input. If you don't have dual display on, gonna cut on your dual display and we're gonna hit one on the keyboard for the fast noise. You can change the detail, contrast, and the brightness to fit your liking. 
you know how to like the display go into the inspector tab and turn up the refraction strength to keep the effect from spreading all over the screen you're actually going to take the input of your media one connect it to the blue input of the displays that's going to actually limit it strictly just to the frame of your subject for animation on the noise going to click on your fast noise and going to turn up the c3 back in the edit page make sure your middle clip is highlighted go into the special tab zoom in it's going to give you that displaced effect now if you wanted to kind of like bubble around a little bit more than that just go back open infusion the mass input here the blue one uncheck it and it'll start to spread all around your page get a little bit more control where it's just not just spreading all over you want to kind of isolate it to the subject you can also cut down the brightness it, also, it goes down to negative one but you can actually hit negative whatever on your keyboard but that pretty much got completely rid of it so we're just gonna crank it back up all right there's negative 3.7 works for this clip i add a soft glow and if you hit the color scale drop down you can actually change the color up as well put a little pink reddish pink hey if you like today's video make sure you hit the like button subscribe to the channel for future content follow me on my social medias all links are in the description down below if you want to learn how to create 3d floating objects check out this video here and i'll see you next time